Hello students and good morning to all of you. I hope you all are fit and fine. So after a long time, once again we have come to our grammar classes and today we will be dealing with the topic subject verb agreement. So before coming to the topic, let us know what is a subject in a sentence and what a verb is. So a subject, whatever is talked about or who is talked about in a sentence is called a subject. Suppose for example, we say rose is the most beautiful flower or if we say Raipur is the capital of Chhattisgarh. So in these two sentences, rose and Raipur are the subjects about we are talking. In the same way, if we say uh, Lakshman's elder brother is Ram or Ram is Lakshman's elder brother or if we say the boy stood first in the class is my best friend. In these two sentences, Ram and the boy who stood first in the class are talked about and these are the subject of the sentence. In the same way, let us know what is a verb. A verb is a word of an action or a mental process or a state of being. Now let us see the examples of all these three and differentiate between them. Like if we say run or eat or sleep or read etc. These verbs tell us that some action happens or somebody has done something. In the same way, if we say think, realize, believe, etc., these verbs tell us that something is happening in our mind. And so these are the example of verbs of mental process. In the same way, if we say be or seem or remain or become, these verbs tell us that something exists or continues to exist in a certain way or changes the way it exists. So these are the examples of state of being. So before that also we knew what is a subject and what are verbs. Now what is a subject verb agreement or what is agreement of subject and verb? So we can define this as the verb must agree always with its subject in person or number. If a subject is singular, its verb must also be singular. And if a subject is plural, its verb must also be plural. Now, let us see how we can uh, learn subject verb agreement through rules, the rules which are made to understand this effectively. Let us look into the rules of subject verb agreement. So we go to the first rule. If we have two nouns or pronouns joined by and, the verb used with it should be plural. Noun plus and plus noun has a plural verb. Let's see the example. If we say Ram and Sham are friends. Or if we say potatoes and onions cost rupees 20 a kilo. In these two sentences Ram and Sham, these two nouns or subject is joined by the word and. In the next sentence, potatoes and onions are joined by the word and. And so these are uh, two subjects which takes a plural verb that is are and cost. In this rule, we have an exception. If we have two nouns or subjects joined by and, but it is considered as a single unit, 
or a single idea or is it used as a single idea in that case the verb used should be singular suppose we let's see uh, to an example if we say slow and steady wins the race or if we say bread and butter is a healthy food in these two sentences slow and steady it is termed as a single idea or bread and butter is a single unit so though they have two subjects or two nouns which is joined by and as it has a single idea or it is considered to be a single unit the verb used with it should be singular so slow and steady wins the race bread and butter is a healthy now coming to the second rule if we have two nouns or pronouns and they are joined with as well as in addition to no less than with along with together with in that case the verb used should be according to the first subject of the sentence now let us understand this rule through the examples i along with my friends am going on a tour in the sentence we have two subjects i and my friends in which i is the first subject and my friend is the second subject in the same way the second example my friends as well as i are performing a dance in the sentence my friend my friends is the first subject i is the second subject in the third sentence mr sharma together with his family lives next door in the sentence mr sharma is the first subject his family is the second subject in the fourth sentence i no less than you am to be blamed for this issue in the sentence i is the first subject and you is the second subject so according to the second rule we have uh, learned that if two subjects or two nouns or pronouns are joined with a uh, conjunctions as well as in addition to no less than with along with together with the verb used in such sentences is used according to the first subject so in the first sentence according to i the verb which we have used is i am going on a tour in the second sentence my friends are performing a dance in the third sentence mr sharma lives next door in the fourth sentence i am to be blamed for this issue now let's come to the third rule the third rule says that not only plus noun but also plus noun neither plus noun plus nor plus noun or either plus noun plus or plus noun sentences joined by the above four relative conjunctions take verbs according to the second subject of the sentence so whenever we write a sentence which is joined by the above four relative conjunctions like not only but also neither nor either or so these sentences take the verbs according to the second subject of the uh, sentence if the subject is singular it will take a singular verb if the subject is plural it will take a plural verb now let us look into the examples not only he but also his friends are hard working in this sentence we have two subjects the first one is he the second one is his friends and the verb we have taken according to the second subject that is his friends so we have written are hard working in the second sentence neither the students nor the teacher is going for the excursion in the sentences in the sentence we have two subjects the first one is the students the second one is the teacher 
The second subject is singular, so we take is as the verb. In the third example, we see either God or the doctors are responsible for his life. In this sentence, the first subject is God, the second is the doctors. So the second subject is plural and so we take are as the verb to this sentence. Now coming to the fourth rule. Uh, fourth rule, uh, we have to be very careful. Error of proximity is a common error and it should be avoided. It is incorrect to say that verbs should be placed according to the subject near to it and this is a wrong notion. Mostly we say that we use the verb in a sentence uh, according to the subject which is very closely placed to the verb. But this notion or this uh, view is incorrect. Now let us see the examples. If we say the cost of new cars are and is we have two options and rising the answer to this or the verb which we will be use we will use in this sentence will be singular like the cost of new cars is rising in the same way if we say the appearance of his clothes and we have two options two verbs is and are very bad the verb which we will choose for this sentence will be is so the correct uh, sentence to this will be the appearance of his clothes is very bad. In these sentences the verb is is used not according to the new cars or new clothes but according to the cost and the appearance which are singular. Now let us come to the uh, fifth rule of subject verb agreement. When a sentence begins with each, every, neither, either, apart from its pair like either or or neither nor, then we use singular verb be the subject plural. It means that when a sentence begins with the words each or every or neither or either, the uh, sentence will take a singular verb even if the subject used in the sentence is plural. Let's look into the examples. Either of the boys is or are not allowed to go out. So the correct verb here will be is. Either of the boys is not allowed to go out. In the same way, if we say each of the students is or are supposed to participate in the games, we will be taking the verb is and the sentence will be each of the students is supposed to participate in the games. Coming to the sixth rule. If we have plural noun used as a single subject, verbs used in such sentences should be singular. Like Look into the examples. 5 million rupees is or are a huge amount. Though the subject here is plural, 5 million rupees, it seems to be plural noun, but it is used as a single subject. So it will take a singular verb and the answer will be 5 million rupees is a huge amount. In the same way, if we say 5,000 miles is or are long distance, we will be writing the verb according to the subject that is 5,000 miles and which is termed as a single subject and so it will take a singular verb. So 5,000 miles is a long distance. Coming to the seventh rule of subject verb agreement, if we have two nouns preceded by an article and joined by and, it will take a plural verb. But if we have two nouns and the first one only preceded by an article and joined by and, it will take a singular verb. Now look into the examples. The actor and the singer have arrived. So why do we take a plural verb? have 
with this sentence is that when we say the actor and the singer, that means if we place an article with each of the subject, it tells us that these are two different persons. And that is why the subject becomes plural and we take a plural verb. In the second example, we say the actor and singer has arrived. In this sentence, one subject has an article, the second subject doesn't have an article. This shows that the actor and singer is the same person. It is not two different persons, it is the same person and so it is singular and it takes a singular verb has. So in sentence A, the actor and the singer are two different persons, whereas in sentence B, the actor and singer is the same person. So plural subject, plural verb, singular subject, singular verb. Coming to the eighth rule of subject verb agreement, let us see. Sentences beginning with many of and a great many. Now what is the difference between these two types of sentences beginning with many a and a great many? Sentences beginning with many a will be followed by singular subject as well as singular verbs. Whereas sentences beginning with a great many will be followed by a plural subject as well as a plural verb. Now take a look to the example. Many a soldier has met his death on the battlefield. So many a soldier here because the sentence is beginning with many a, uh, it will be termed as a singular subject and so it will take a singular verb has. In the second example, a great many people have come for the meeting. In this sentence, the sentence is beginning with a great many people and so it will take a plural verb. So plural subject, plural verb, singular subject, singular verb. So we will be remembering that a sentence beginning with many a will take a singular verb. And sentences that begin with a great many will always take a plural verb. Now coming to the ninth rule. If we have an unfulfilled condition which contains words like if, as if, as though, even if, wish, etc. And we have to be forms of the verb that is am, is, are, was, were, will, shall, the verbs used after will always be in plural form, be it the subject is singular or plural. That means if we have an unfulfilled condition and the sentence contains the words like if, as if, as, though, even if, wish, etc., and the verbs which are written in these sentences are in to be forms that is am, is, are, was, were, shall, will. So these will be always in plural form and uh, it will always be in plural form and be it the subject is singular or plural. Now let's look into the example if we say she behaves as if she is my boss. This sentence is incorrect because we have used as if and after it the subject she should take a plural verb in the past tense. So the sentence must be written as she behaves as if she were my boss. Like if we say if I were the Prime Minister of India. So it is uh, an unfulfilled wish and so it takes a plural verb. Coming to the 10th rule of subject verb agreement, if we have sentence beginning with a number of, a large number of or number of 
then the noun or subjects we use should be plural and the verbs used as well should be plural. For example, a number of students were present there or a large number of flowers have fallen to the ground or number of students in the class are suffering from cup and cold. So the sentences which begins with a number of, a large number of or number of is termed to be taking a plural subject and that is why the plural subject will be followed by a plural verb. Now, contradicting to these sentences, if we have sentences beginning with the number of, the nouns or subjects followed by it will be plural, but the verbs used will be singular. For example, the number of absentees is rising this year or the number of boxes missing is black in color. So, two things we have to remember. Sentences beginning with a number of, a large number of or number of, it will have a plural subject and it will uh, take plural verbs and just opposite to it, the sentences beginning with the number of will be taking singular verbs with it. Now coming to the 11th rule. If we write sentences with one auxiliary verb and two main verbs, the sentence will be incorrect because both the main verbs are to be preceded by auxiliary verbs according to the number, singular or plural of the subjects used in the sentences. Let us understand this rule uh, through an example. If we say 10 candidates have won the election and one lost. So here, this sentence will be termed to be incorrect. Because in this sentence, we have two main verbs. The first one is one and the second one is lost. And only one auxiliary verb have, according to the plural subject, 10 candidates have been has been used in it. So the main verb lost does not have an auxiliary verb which is incorrect. So in such sentences where we have two main verbs, we will be inserting two helping verbs with each of the main verb. And that is why when we say 10 candidates have won the election and one lost, this sentence is incorrect. And the correct sentence will be 10 candidates have won the election and one has lost. So two main verbs are there, won and lost. And each of these uh, verbs will be taking an auxiliary verb with it. That is have won and has lost. Have because the subject is plural, 10 candidates and has because one is singular. Now coming to the next rule, if we write a sentence with one main verb and two auxiliaries, the sentence will be incorrect because with two main verbs, two auxiliaries should be used according to the tense of the main verb. For example, if we write a sentence, she has never and will never do it. This sentence is incorrect because we should use two main verbs with two auxiliaries. In this sentence, we will be using a main verb after the word never. As the helping verb has takes the third form of the verb, so the sentence will be correctly written as she has never done and will never do it. We have two main verbs, done and do, and two helping verbs, has and will. So, we come to the conclusion that when we have two main verbs, we will be using two auxiliaries with it. Otherwise, it will be termed to be incorrect 
the same way as two helping verbs need two main verbs the same way two main verbs also need two auxiliaries so by uh, the rules that we have just now seen i think you all have understood the subject verb agreement and you will find it easy to write sentences where we have to insert a correct verb according to the agreement of it to its subject in a sentence uh, when you go through the rules minutely you will be understanding well and even the examples will be very helpful for you all hope you understood this uh, topic of us that is subject verb agreement thank you for giving a patient listening thank you